Good morning, everyone. Um, well, let's see. I made this video earlier this morning in a series that I call I Woke Up Thinking that I started in Spanish. Um, and I, um, one of my problems is that I don't find venues. I have several problems <laughs> in, in, in the uh, dissertations that I attempt to make. One of them is uh, that I, don't, I can't find a category or a place where I would appropriately find uh, an environment of people an environment of people that uh, would be interested, would be turned on by what I'm saying or, or might know much more than me in order to be able to uh, handle one of my other problems which is uh, a lack of vocabulary and language articulation. I'm bad at both my languages, Spanish and English. Uh, I guess it has to do with uh, bilingual people uh, extending on a limited amount of articulation of uh, uh, vocabulary and grammar than most people, I mean regular people who only have one uh, language. And so I don't know how much philosophy, um, uh, actually there's very little philosophy in what I'm about to talk about. Um, there is some philosophy, but then again, one of my other problems is that I have very little reading uh, in my life. I've done very little reading. I, I, don't, I can't reference writers, thinkers, philosophers, uh, famous politicians, you know, just basically mainstream media is what I know. I'm a TV generation person. I, I grew up learning what I do. Uh, learning what I do, um, no. Um, on, on, by visual media. And in this I've done a, a good job in being interested, uh, in, you know, going after documentaries and things that educate, that teach um, high concepts or different concepts or what have you. Uh, but um, of, of human sciences, uh, nature, but uh, you know, when, 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 when people like me do their own personal development discoveries or explorations and of uh, subject matters, we find that we're in this big ocean of non-referenceable ideas and if on top of it you're bilingual and have bad vocabulary, you're in a dire strait. So I ask for your patience and, and um, what um, if there is any philosophical aspect to what I want to talk about is it is that it poses us with uh, proposes to us the question what to do then about our um, our uh, our civilization's existential uh, predicament that you know what do we do about our civilization about ourselves about humanity's uh, continued uh, road forward continuing road forward um, and you'll understand what I mean by that but if there is um, any philosophical question it would have to be that um, appropriately I'm wearing a shirt that <laughs> I like because it's called it's the last resort the last resort is is to save ourselves <laughs> save ourselves uh, as a humanity and to uh, pursue the um, the human sciences of understanding what is happening to our species for what the species is and in, in, in the in, in its uh, sort of animal primitive uh, definitions of uh, extensions of our brain and our brain's um, chemical biological functioning and so th what I'm going to talk about is a bit of uh, it could be considered humanism another problem I have is like I said I don't know what category to put it in but every once in a while I get a I get a a notification, a notification on um, this group from uh, Great Philosophical Problems. I think it has changed names, but basically it's a it's a, a philosophy group, and I have other. I also belong to a psychology group that I get less notifications from even. 
and when I saw this the notification uh, on Facebook even though I'm suspended I wasn't able to respond right away um, I thought oh you know if anywhere perhaps here there would be a lot of people that understand what I uh, want to talk about okay so that's a, a too long of a five minute five and a half minute introduction I'm gonna pause it right now I'm gonna start on basically trying to be as accurately translating um, of what I did you know because when I do uh, stuff in two languages I try to uh, copy exactly the content of what I did in the other language for the language I trans I translated to so I'm going to think about this a little bit and I'm going to start again I uh, mean start up the video again okay um, all right I was I've been thinking about how to do this uh, I, it's video writing I call it video writing and I should be calling it radio uh, video draft <laughs> video drafting because I'm realizing that it's a process that I'm involved in working on rather um, and I also realized that it's not very yeah I think I just paused this uh, right before now uh, saying that I was gonna look at the Spanish one I made to try to make sure that I translated everything and I listened I ended up listening to the whole Spanish uh, thing to try to uh, see what all the points were so I could transport all the points to this video and um, what I realized is that because as I was as I was listening to it, I was um, thinking out loud inside in my mind how I was going to phrase it in English. And as I was doing this, I could hear myself um, not coming up with the words, not knowing how to approach uh, the conclusions. And um, what I'm realizing is that I'm, I'm sort of working on a, a, a type of uh, art. It's, a, it's writing, but it's writing with video. Like a writer who, who does one draft and tells a story or talks about something in his writing and then he reads it again and he doesn't like it. I'm kind of starting to do that. I'm starting to layer um, over, um, over what I said, recorded before. And as I'm doing it, I imagine much like, the, much like a writer, um, I'm learning to become more solid in what I'm comprehending, what I'm uh, developing and uh, what the dissertation is about uh, because it's, it's an exploration and as it's an exploration every time I launch myself to make these videos as a writer would launch himself to just start writing uh, I feel my weakness I feel the feebleness of of, um, of, 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 the, of the lack of knowing how to word it better and on top of it like I said before I'm really challenged <laughs> with uh, language and vocabulary so um, but I have a problem I can't if I stop this video I lose it uh, my computer is just going to delete it um, because my intention was to actually make a, a, a more summarized continue in Spanish uh, and do a recapitulation sort of of the one I did before to try to see if I could make it briefer quicker and say the same thing over and over like layers uh, so I was just gonna do that instead of and I forgot I didn't forget but I, I thought I could put this aside and complete it later but now I see that if I stop it um, it will it will just disappear I can't pause it and save it uh, on this computer or on this program anyways so I am kind of obligated <laughs> um, not very flattering to the listener I, I realize to um, kind of obligated to finish this, uh, finish what I uh, I said this video was going to be, which was going to be a translation of uh, of what I just the one I did in Spanish, and um, and it's it is a little more difficult for some reason I can't understand 
why I don't I don't see the concepts as easily. But I'm going to try to do that anyways, and I hope you forgive me. I hope that uh, you can sort of, uh, and I'm, more importantly, I'm going to try to be quick about it. <sighs> Let's see. First, uh, I need to... It's it's I don't know how to how to go into it. Um, okay, let me pause it. I'm gonna think about it and I'm gonna go into it. Okay. The world, the uh, civilization we designed, the world that mankind has uh, has produced, has designed, has built. Um, is a, a result of a paradigm that is happening in our in our minds. A paradigm that is sort of like the base, the essential base upon which we reason existence. This essential base is laid on our most how can I say this, most animal primitive based behavior, our mind, the human mind and, and how it uh, naturally is completely devoid, separate to the intellectual reasoning and sciences and beliefs that we have evolved and we have taught each other to think about existence in our own behavior. Aside from that, I'm not getting into that right now, I'm talking about just the species reset completely blank how we are in other words psychologically psychologic nat psych psychologically natural our natural psychology um, our impulses our primitive raw behavior um, is a paradigm in itself and we um, have ideas and it may be caused by a capacity to be a, a, a capacity of high and caused by high intelligence um, where we set ourselves ideas to do things that we want to do ways that we want to behave things that we want to do for others or for ourselves um, and then we run into um, negations that are also the product of our own will in other words um, in looking at the world for example um, take human behavior I was I started by thinking this morning how uh, remembering about a, a childhood friend I had um, where we both had a thing with about being um, eating too much and get tending to get fat and I later saw her years later and she uh, became somebody who no longer had an issue with eating and she stayed thin the rest of her life. Uh, and then I was thinking, well, that's pretty outstanding because most of us, most people, fat tends to be a problem that is hard to get rid of as and sort of tend to get fatter as we get older. And obviously it's not an, a very difficult problem for the world, particularly the Western materialistic capitalistic world um, and so um, that started making me think about the difficulty of our own will to will ourselves to be or do the things that we prefer uh, and so I, I thought of for example um, you know the robber the, the, the person who robbed when when they were a kid, maybe they they stole some their little their buddy's, um, you know, drawing set, their colors at school, and um, you know, and then as 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 they got older, and as we ran into these friends again, we saw that kids that were really uh, tend to be. Uh, mean, lose their patience and bully other kids or would tend to steal things from their little friends in, in elementary school, change. They no longer, uh, they did that a few times. It seems that it is totally natural for, for people to uh, do what we consider transgressions in, uh, 
in a um, groomed uh, civil society uh, try things, you know, hit somebody, uh, beat them up or something, and then later um, we do change, in other words. So uh, what I'm talking, what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is that although it seems that there's a paradigm, uh, an unchangeable paradigm of contradicting not being able to be or do the things that we consider better or or uh, or more preferable the hope is that indeed they're not the 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 what the what is rather observable is that we are capable of changing it but this is not how i went about explaining it the last time um what i need to put the focus on is in the the more the, the the unchanging apparent unchanging paradigm in which that we have explained in other words how we have explained ourselves to ourselves and civilization through, since the beginning of time to uh, try to resolve or to deal with this situation where we we don't want to transgress the things that we propose ourselves uh, uh, in, in by the same um, in the same sense that we don't want uh, others to harm us or harm other people um, and yet they first say they won't and and they go ahead and rob and they go ahead and kill and they go ahead and and um, do the things that they say themselves they prefer not to so the, the way we uh, have uh, dealt with this as a intellectual civilization uh, is is to say that there is a, a God God creators divinities um, who are eternal and above anything that is a problem or an obstacle or a contradiction for us our creators in other words uh, father in heaven or what have you um, who we are is unattainable obviously we can't touch it we can't see it we can't reach it it's and nobody has come back from death uh, or from uh, a spaceship and said I saw God on that planet over there you know we we needed uh, it it seems to fit in other words that there is no knowledge of of um, of a divinity because um, well, because there's, I totally, I'm trying, totally misexplaining this compared to how I went about it in Spanish. But this is what I'm trying to say: that what we have based civilization on is in this, in on this incapability of changing our predicament. We will, con we seem to, un, un, un uh, without being able to understand why. We are unable to change our betrayal of ourselves. In other words, we propose ourselves higher goals. We want things to be a certain way. We want to behave towards our, other people a certain way. We want others, but yet bad things happen. You know, the 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 the, um, the belief is that uh, mankind was born in sin, and so uh, our explanation. Uh, in trying to combat this uh, tripping contradiction, this this permanent um, um, disappointment, is to say that um, we have to struggle towards being better, not sinning, not transgressing, meeting the uh, the standard of of gods or divinities who who um who do know the answers but sort of uh leave it up to us and if we don't then we are punished because as um we suffer the consequences individually because as all of uh, theology different schools of theology or different schools of religious schools of thought throughout history basically have come down on the individual uh, uh, each one is responsible for their own betrayals. This, this, 
meaning this this uh, paradigm, this unescapable, inescapable um, situation of always only being able to do good so long, only so long, and, and eventually, um, and this uh, is not. Um, this is how we have explained it, and this is what we have come to believe is our human condition. Uh, we have come to believe that mankind, humanity, basically is in a struggle of trying to be something it can never arrive at, although God expects us to. And, and so we're constantly, uh, to, we, we have become accustomed, uh, we have become accustomed to accepting, we have accepted that um, we're anticipating the betrayal, in other words. We're anticipating, uh, and in fact, you, you see people today seriously believe, uh, philosophically or psychologically or what have you, they believe that there will always be the person who wants to uh, kill, there will always be a murderer, there will always be a rapist, the countries will, will always want to war against each other, this way of understanding civilization comes from a setup that we have made for ourselves uh, and we have justified it as uh, God, uh, creators, deities, um, uh, making it so, making it this way, and on top of it they expect us to overcome it. Um, and so when I was thinking about uh, my little friend and how people can change and so what is it then and this is what caught my my imagination or my curiosity is so why then do people do change because uh, when when somebody it's very rare to see people that uh, we consider redeemed who went to prison and became good people uh, my question is it, is it not, could it not be perhaps a much more naturally capable, much more comfortably uh, possible, uh, much more conducively uh, plausible um, thing to, that can happen to the human mind, which makes all the sense in the world, because as a collective, as a species, what comes first is not bad, evil, hurt, harm, or, or harming the other much less because nature and evolution first and foremost cares for the collective to survive it's all about the collective it's all about the 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 super community uh, the species you know uh, uh, to um, thrive and so that means that for each individual what our preference is, our preference is to uh, do good to another. Although this seems like almost a, a religious do good, do gooder. In reality, that's nature's preference that we we don't kill our neighbor, <laughs> but that we help our neighbor uh, also be there. Now, there's a world of of, of forces and dynamics and uh, dynamics with their variants that happen in which we get we lose ourselves uh, in conversations perhaps that would uh, find, uh, take hours to get to the same conclusion but we can safely conclude that if we have to put a first and a second it would be first that we it is in our best interest that everybody else and the collective around us is also surviving uh, and that makes all the natural evolutionary ecological sense in the world and therefore it stands to reason that we're capable of recuperating of changing what was betraying that originally so if a kid was raised badly uh, as a little as a brat that was always taking and spoiled taking, robbing stuff, beating up his kid, his friends in, in elementary school. Uh, it stands to reason that it, it has to do with how badly he was raised and how far and removed from nature's preference, which is for him to be congenial with the species. 
And therefore, it would probably mean that in his brain, in his mind, there is a, a he is wired and set up towards natural redemption, towards understanding how what he, what how he was doing was uncomfortable, wrong is not what he prefers in reality, but he just didn't see it, and then appreciate when he feels better towards his little friends, and he appreciates himself and he appreciates life better when he sees the openness, the light of a behavior, a, uh, a, a collective good behavior he never knew before. And so he was healed, let's say, in the environment of his own family by uh, loving, wise uncles or, 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 or grandparents that moved into the house. And all of a sudden, it, it changed the dynamics. And this family all of a sudden started healing their own kids. And it was all more in agreement with, with the greater scope of nature. And, of course, this doesn't uh, seem to agree very much with uh, the condemnation that uh, whether we're talking about Christianity or we're talking about Buddhism, it's the same thing. Because Buddhism also says that we're challenged by, uh, by, our, uh, by our ego that keeps failing in this... Uh, there's a uh, this triangulation that happens which in order to we have to dominate something we have to conquer something that keeps happening and so it seems that what religions uh, miss uh, pointing out is the supremacy of the collective the supremacy of knowing of this of society of the collective of the community somehow being endowed in ways that we haven't intellectualized, we haven't formalized in scientific understanding, ways by which it is completely capable of observing how one of its individuals is, you know, went off the wrong way and how to lead it back to its own preference, which is to be congenial with the community. Um, there seems to be attempts, very rude, uh, sort of, uh, uh, um, I don't know how to say this in English, but when something is coarse, net, you know, just the raw fat, you know, not the, not the sophisticated or refined version of something. But it seems that politically we're trying, we're, thinkers have resulted in political uh, ideas, socialism, communism, that are attempting to take the higher understanding of thinkers uh, at the beginning of, of last century of intellectuals and try to see if they can make a government that has and, and it obviously it it hasn't really uh, seduced anybody because it didn't take long for uh, for it to be disliked or it to fall prey to its own uh, ego and, and wanting to enforce this even though it may have stemmed from a higher inspira intellectual inspiration it uh, it felt it succumbed to it's uh, in, in forceful, forceful ego, and then it didn't take long for other uh, f political philosophies to uh, vilify communism and socialism, and so down it went. But I see it as our first rough draft, our sort of first attempt at taking a, a, at rising to a higher. Um, of course, even socialism and communism were prey to this the matrix, this this base not matrix, forget that word, this uh, essential uh, base wiring of believing that the individual uh, is the source of humanity's contradiction. In other words, that there is a God that knows better and knows that in each individual there's something that will betray his own kind and himself and so there was judgment there was punishment there was condemnation even in communism and socialism so but still it seems like it was the first sort of the first hiccup a kind of say wait a second there's got to be a way that we're not separated and rulers and sub but in sort of we're all one one <laughs> one uh, super one collective before we are individuals, which is the, the highest form of understanding nature, 
uh, and therefore it would be the highest form of understanding the order of society. Uh, but for that, we would have to accompany it with all of the human sciences that that would have transformed all of uh, so of, of the world, basically this, the world of sciences and um, and uh, institutional uh, philosophy, the philosophies that pertain to each institutional insti areas of institution in a na uh, of nations and such. So it would be transforming, to rebuild the intellectuality of the world, in other words. But, um, boy, this came out really different to the one in Spanish. But basically, what I'm trying to explain is that um, we have been conditioned by our own making to the idea that um, because it was, I should say, the, re the reason is because basically we could not understand why bad things happen. <laughs> we could not understand why ultimately nature, although it, it wants the collective to, um, to succeed, ultimately it has to equip each individual to survive even if a couple, <laughs> a male and a female, by themselves are the ones that survive in order to reestablish the collective. This is far from saying the individual is what matters, which is the more kind of contemporary Western thought of you materialize, you manifest your own will, you create your own reality, it's all about you, the self-empowerment, da, 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 da. Completely different. I'm speaking in the sense of scientifically. Um, um, so even though uh, why did I why did I refer to that I I, I lost it, but um, let me see if I can remember. I'm going to pause for a second. All right, okay. So when humanity saw itself before the question of the unanswerable, the unanswerable question is why why did a father kill his own children? Uh, why did a country betray and ended up killing their own cousins and children in the country in their neighbor country why um why do bad things why does injustice happen um why can't we do anything about the sufferings and the contradictions and the betrayals that come with the earth or the species and uh something generated a, an all good higher uh, entity a necessity to have an entity this is not to say this is not being an, this is not being atheist atheistic it's not saying that we don't have a creator or there is not God uh, creator of, of it's just cr expanding the sense of uh, of self uh, of collective empowerment of autonomy it does. It could very well be the will of God that we uh, realize that our creators gave us the power to paint their face or His face any way we wanted. You know, go ahead. You know, make describe me uh, any way you want. Uh, it is not untrue that I exist. You know, <laughs> but um, what has motivated us is not having an answer. It, what has motivated the creation of religions is not the verification that God exists, although it, it, may, be it may very well be verifiable um, that creators exist, but what has it traditionally made us, uh, gave us confidence and reassured us every day in, in the reality of uh, of uh, and the truthfulness of religion is not the verification that uh, gods or creators existed. It is that we had a necessity to not be victims to the paradigm of our own contradiction and betrayal. And so by an outside voice that is always more willing for, the, for us to be good, to thrive, which is what the collective wants. So you could say God should be 
the collective of humanity because it doesn't want us to hurt ourselves <laughs> you know um, uh, we have made this entity with instructions on how to behave in order to deal with the contradictions the thing is that this paradigm or this way of explaining our predicament doesn't explain that we have a great deal of control and a great deal of, uh, of accountability in how the, uh, the adversaries, the, 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 the opposition to goodness, the resulting, the, uh, the things that we don't want, let's just say, that occur um, in society are the result of how we raise our own children, how we raise ourselves not by the school of one moral school of morality or by one teaching but by the whole world by everything when our kids learn when our sibling when our siblings not siblings our offspring uh are growing up they're not just becoming what we teach them as parents or what maybe they teach in the different uh, venues of moral values, principles in school or in a religious um, uh, affiliation of some sort, belonging to a religion, religious school of thought, they are raised by the entire effect of civilization interacting with itself. So everything that we see the world be, uh, everything that we see the world treat each other and themselves like, when we're growing up, we see what they tell us we should be, and we see how being that results in the world, and that in turn teaches us about how valuable or how true it is what they're trying to teach us at home. And so the whole world raises us, and we are the world. <laughs> we are all people. And so when we seize that reality that we are responsible for the gangster, for the murderer, for the corrupt politician, for the heartless uh, people of the world, the people that launch other people against each other, the people who rob, the people who take advantage of other people. We ourselves created the world that made them. Then uh, we are presenting ourselves with a completely different world. We're presenting ourselves not with this losing um, scheme of unavoidable badness that rears its head through an anonymously in anybody uh, throughout the um, throughout the population of humanity upon which we are we have the authority the divine authority to condemn and and cleanse out of the, the pool of people because, you know, it's a completely different uh, essential base upon which to design our civilization, upon which to design the way our country work, the way our institutions work. Right now they're based on this paradigm that um, we are somehow erred, we're flawed, we will eventually tend to uh, hurt, harm, uh, and and most of us, maybe some believe this, that most of us have succeeded in taming that. So we speak of a civilization that has tamed its uh, humanity. Uh, but, you know, there's always that danger. And so thank God that there is a God that, ta that teaches us how to identify and how to find who behaves against others. <laughs> and this way we are never empowered to uh, be accountable and responsible for the uh, for what really causes these uh, enemies to randomly appear <laughs> they're not enemies they are ourselves <laughs> we make our own people and so uh, it's a completely it's a different uh, premise on which to understand the workings of everything civilization moralities the law the reason polit politics, 
think the way they do about their people, about other countries. Uh, and it is definitely a much better proposal uh, to the world than uh, what we are now going by, sort of like the, the, the voltage that we're going on right now, which is um, one in which we are our own enemy, which of course makes no sense. And in, in the world, the, um, it makes no scientific sense because, as I said, uh, science proves that what is most important to evolution and creation and life is that the collective thrives. And so each individual is in, 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 it, it is in the best interest and the ult, uh, utmost and optimal desire and wish for any and all individuals of that collective to have everybody else also succeed. We just simply have not created a world, a world with the languages, nor the vocabulary, nor the streams and constructions of reasoning that that support that essential base understanding of our existential condition. Our existential condition has been has been um, understood as different. Has been um, is in, is understood different. Now there are different beliefs in this, but they, we still haven't embraced just how much the majority of the world is going by the old voltage <laughs> everything the judge that, that puts all the blame on 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 the, the person standing in court and and as an institution is completely impotent before um, its role it, the role that it should have which is to guide and heal and keep society safe our institutions are uh, geared towards condemning individuals. And this comes from the setup that we have always had throughout human history. Uh, if we change that setup <laughs> and we start understanding that, uh, that, it, that that's uh, not necessarily, that is not the way necessarily it needs to be, then our, it's not that all our world would change completely. Our, our ways of ordering nation, society, the elements might be very similar to do with education, to do with guiding society, to, to do with creating food uh, production, to do uh, with building housing and transportation, what have you. But it is how we think of people that would change. And so, for example, a judicial institution would be geared to analyzing how the individual was affected by the society he grew up in and what the society he is now living in can do in order to uh, through understanding the human brain the human natural human natural psychology the best we can try to the best we can um, do what we need to do to have that person see what he was like what society, what life would be better as, um, wake up his own desire to change, and which are all, they're not ideals. <laughs> These are not ideals that uh, some people, oh, you want utopia, you know, I mean, no, this is, this is what nature wants. Nature wants to see uh, a tree that was, for example, if a, a tree was leaning over because there was, um, a drought and no rain it tends to it usually grows up straight and because there was for a four-year drought it started leaning over and trying to reach a little creek that was running near its roots and all of a sudden you see a pine tree that is strangely crooked uh, <laughs> you know you know that it's it really wasn't nature's intention for it uh, to be that way Though nature did what it needed to do in order to keep that that uh, that tree alive, well, you know, criminals are not so different. What we call criminals, people that uh, exert violence, or there there are all sorts of human sciences of psychology of sociology that explain what happens to people, and we talk about them in court even, <laughs> and we consciously leave them out of court. Like for example, 
take the um, the, Menes, the Menendez brothers. You know, they, they did something horrible. They, they, as teenagers, I think they were still teenagers, or they were right there, they shot, their, they killed their parents. It is such an obvious, obvious case of childhood development, sociological influence. It's, it's just saturated. It's saturated with things that are about human sciences. You know, it's not something weird like a completely sterile, artificial, selfish act in killing somebody so they could steal their cocaine and, and, and go sell it, you know, so that they could be, or killing a wife so that they could keep the inheritance or, or something that reeks of, that doesn't, uh, that, that, that is, that screams of, of hard, conscious, um, cruel behavior which even that can be understood by, uh, by natural reasoning. But the case of the Menendez brothers, it was even brought up in court that the father molested the children. And it never played into anything. I'm not even saying that it should have taken time out of their sentence. It never played into anything that had to do with reasoning or intelligence in the judicial system or the, or the case or the proceedings of the court. It was like it was completely irrelevant and unimportant. And yet we have laws that, um, crimes of passion, you know, that try to incorporate. It's almost like we want to, we kind of want to be able to be more intelligent about human behavior, but our institution is got his hands behind, uh, tied behind its back and as a nation we can't change our own institutions and we can't change anything and nobody wants to be more intelligent of our, our, our own society or, or, or acknowledge the errors that we make humanly against uh, other human beings and I believe that all of the, all that, that situation in itself, this situation in itself has to do with the setup that we have been brought generation after generation, thousands of generations, believing that we're incapable, that we simply will find always evil, uh, or, or willingness to destroy, to undo, and to betray within the species itself, before there ever is anywhere a greater desire to keep all individuals and the collective healthy and thriving, which is the scientific truth of the species, of all living species. Uh, instead, we subscribe to this idea that um, there is, the knowledge of overcoming that is outside of us. It is in, in, in something that is unverifiable, that exists after death, perhaps, that is somewhere else out there in, in heaven after we die. And here it is not. <laughs> Even though in religion we say that, that God is here present in all of us and he already was here within a human being, uh, you know, and all these things. But, you know, there is even teaching in Christianity that says, I am capable of bringing heaven to the world. I can be there. I already did one of you as me. Uh, you know, the, the kingdom of heaven is, is within you. <laughs> so in other words, you could, God can be the collective if, is what that is saying. The truth, you don't need to succumb to being erred and flawed and wait for God to save you or to have you be reborn because you as a species are limited to always find half of you that will come and ruin things, <laughs> you know. Uh, in scripture itself, it says that that doesn't have to be so, but, you know, but, but, well, maybe that but is followed by it's up to you if you want that. And you know what? We don't have to decide it. <laughs> Nature already is that. Nature already is, um, the preference in each individuals for all individuals to thrive so the collective and the community of the whole species can thrive and and continue forward healing and growing and 
expanding and evolving in, in, on the world and in the universe and in the cosmos. It's the nature of light, it's the nature of sunlight, it's the nature of, of life to go forth and beyond the planet. Apparently, apparently we're, gonna, we're in a hurry to take it over to planets that we would be having a hard time trying to kick up again, start up again. But, you know, that's what we want. But uh, so the desire is not lacking. Uh, and there it is. There it is. So uh, what area this would belong in, what category this dissertation is it, a, a, a human philo uh, humanist philosophy pseudo religion I don't know uh, what I do know is the significance of it and so that's why I said I don't know if I said earlier but I, I, I felt when I woke up this morning thinking this um, I felt a little uh, afraid kind of intimidated because I know what it flies in the face it flies in the face of hundreds of situations that would in anger or or make people ridicule what I'm saying or 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 dismiss you as as you know being ridiculous or, or being irrelevant or what have you um, and yet I know it's where its substance its essence goes directly to everywhere in civilization and uh, how to present it is my great, um, you know, enigma right now. I don't. I'm making these video uh, writings, but I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm, you know, learning to use video editors and seeing if I can do better presentations that are more final product instead of video drafts like this. But um, I still don't know where. And what I do know, however, is that it, I, I need to find a means, a place to join with others uh, that are, that are in, on the same playing field, that see the same area of things, that get the majority of the same things, and that we can start talking, uh, starting from the same work plane um, as to how to manifest, you know, how it would extrude portions of change, how it would deal with a certain specific situation, how, how these things could uh, be presented in, in the existing, in the working world, uh, and intermingle with the existing dynamics in, uh, through the different dynamics that they would propose. And, um, and for all this, it all has to do with communication with education, but not like academic education, but the sense of, in the sense of what we all learn by living uh, and hearing each other and talking to one another. And uh, I'm kind of at a loss. I don't know where to go with it, but so, okay. So this is it. That's that's it. I more or less did a, a, a decent translation job, completely different. It came out a completely, in a completely different form, but the message, in its uh, kernel, <laughs> in its uh, in its um, base, is is the same as the one I just did in Spanish, and I think that now what I need to do is probably stick more to each language instead of trying to jump from one to the other. Uh, develop a lot along one language and develop a lot of drafts one after the other along another language, uh, because what what I need to do is solidify and and synthesize and, and um, create the ideas more compact, more direct, more uh, practical, more pragmatic thoughts, uh, and more relevant to the world that everybody lives so that they make more sense and so that they're more interesting uh, to people and in in what their own particular lives are about. Um, okay. Thanks.